Welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new here. It is Monday, so it is meal prep day. I have three absolutely fantastic recipes to share with you. We have breakfast, lunch, and a dessert, a chocolatey, ooey, gooey dessert. So if you wanna see what I have for this week's meal prep, stay tuned. On the run from my given disaster. Speed away from the holy mind. For breakfast this week, I'm going to be making heart healthy overnight oats. I'm so excited about these. It has been a while since I have had overnight oats. I even bought some new ball jars for them so it was a little bit bigger for all of the good stuff. So let me show you what is in this week's breakfast. First, you're going to need some organic rolled oats. Highly recommend organic on your oats. They're heavily sprayed with glycosate, which is the active ingredient in Roundup. So it's kind of the one thing I'd really recommend or one of the things that you pick up organic. So I picked these ones from the Thrive Market. I do have a link down below for Thrive where you get $20 worth of free products when you join the marketplace. I love them. There's free shipping. They give you goodies with your order. It's just an all around great place to find good whole organic foods at really, really affordable prices. So definitely check out the Thrive Market down below. So I'm going to be using their organic rolled oats. I'm going to do oat milk just because I have it on hand and something a little bit different. Chia seeds. These are the ball jars that I picked up. These are the one pint jars. They're a little bit bigger than my old ones, so things will fit a little bit better in there. Organic unsweetened coconut flakes. You'll need some almonds. These are from Nutstop. I also have 10% off for you guys at Nutstop. It is not an affiliate link. It simply just gets you 10% off. I'll put that code here on the screen, and it, the link is down below. I like them as well because they're affordable, and I really like the slivered almonds, so I'm gonna add some of those. You'll need some yogurt. This is the organic whole milk maple heel yogurt. Now I will put the points down below for full fat milk and fat free yogurt, milk, yogurt, and fat free yogurt so you can decide which one you wanna use in your overnight oats. And then you'll need some frozen fruit. I'm gonna be doing this smoothie singles. I wanna use these up. And I thought this sounded really good for these oats. It's peaches, pineapple, strawberries, grapes, and passion fruit. And I got these at Costco and they come in these little bags. So I'm just going to add some of these to the overnight oats. And then lastly, you'll just need some cinnamon and some vanilla extract. So let's get started on breakfast. So let's put together our overnight oats. So I have my ball jar here. You can see I finally wised up and bought a bigger ball jar because the other one I had was too small. So this should be the perfect size. So first thing I'm going to do is at the bottom, I'm going to put my one quarter cup of my rolled oats. I like to put my liquid in last so that it has a chance to kind of soak through everything. So there are my oats. To that, I'm going to add one tablespoon of those slivered almonds. I also have one tablespoon of unsweetened coconut flakes. Oh, this is gonna be so good. And then I have one tablespoon of my chia seeds and then I do like to kind of just give that a quick mix just kind of roll it around make sure that all gets kind of mixed together nicely to that we're going to go ahead and add one quarter cup of yogurt so this is I'm using the full fat yogurt but I'll definitely leave the points below if it changes them for a fat free yogurt and then I have one third cup of my oat milk so I'm going to go ahead and add that next and then I'm going to add just a splash of vanilla extract and also just the tiniest bit of cinnamon. And then I'm going to add my fruit directly to the top. And here's the fruit that I'm using. So I'm just going to put some in my jar. You can do as much as you want. Frozen fruit is zero points. So I'm just going to kind of fill my jar up probably about half of this bag. These are little individual bags because they're made for smoothies, but I thought I would just use them up in my overnight oats plus that flavor combination of pineapple, papaya, yum. All right, so there we go. We've got everything in our overnight oats here. So all we have to do is put on the lid. We're going to put this in our refrigerator and then each day I just pull one out, mix it up, and I have breakfast. Doesn't this look so good? I probably will pair this with eggs. So let me put together the rest of these and I'll show you all of our completed breakfast. You have to be your biggest fan 
and when things are really tough and they're really rough and nothing's working but there's something inside of you that says I just have to follow that all right so here is breakfast don't these look so good you guys I made five jars of my overnight oats so this is what they look like I give them a good shake before I throw them into the refrigerator and then literally by the morning they're set the fruit is kind of melted and creates like this yummy juice in there it's going to be absolutely delicious so what I probably will end up doing is pairing this with one or two eggs that way I get a little bit of protein along with my oats so let me give you the smart points for the overnight oats. So if you are using full fat yogurt, these are eight smart points on both blue and green and six smart points on the purple plan. Now, if you use fat-free yogurt, you're gonna drop the points by two. So then you're six points on blue and green and four points on purple. But yes, I can't wait for these. This recipe will be on my website, so make sure that you check it out. But I'm excited for breakfast. How awesome is this? Kind of gets you in that springy vibe. So my breakfast are these heart healthy over night oats and some eggs. For lunch this week, I'm going to be making quinoa taco bowls. Now these are actually vegetarian. I am not adding any meat to these because there are beans in here. Now you can certainly add chicken or ground turkey or ground beef, but I'm going to make them without because the protein is going to come from the beans. We're also making a really quick, delicious homemade guacamole. So let me show you what is in this week's lunch. First, you're going to need some quinoa. I'm just gonna cook this in a pan with some broth. That's my favorite way to cook up the quinoa. Also, you'll need some beans, a can of pinto beans and black beans, some taco seasoning. I buy mine off of the Thrive Market because it has fabulous ingredients. Uh, check your ingredients of your regular taco seasoning. There's usually pretty questionable things in there. And this one actually has really, really good ingredients. And again, the link for Thrive and the $20 off is down below in the description box. So that is the components of the bowl itself. And then for toppings, I have some organic tomatoes, we're gonna need some garlic salt for our homemade guacamole. I'm gonna top my bowl with some cilantro, some romaine lettuce. You'll also need some avocados and a lime to make that guacamole. So let's get started on this week's lunch. So the first thing that I've done here is went ahead and added one cup of quinoa, dry quinoa to my pan. And then I added two cups of just some organic free range chicken broth. You wanna do double the liquid to the quinoa amount. You simply bring this to a boil, reduce your heat, pop a lid on, and in about 15 minutes, you have perfectly cooked quinoa. So I'm gonna get that started while we put together the other pieces of our taco bowl. So for our taco bowls, our quinoa is cooking up now. I'm gonna go ahead and in a Ziploc bag, bag up some romaine lettuce. I'm gonna chop up some cilantro, bag that up, and then I went ahead and washed these organic tomatoes. And I'm gonna go ahead and chop those. And we're just gonna put all of this in a little baggie. And then this will just go into our bowl. And we're ready to eat lunch. We'll just empty the contents of the little bag and everything will be nice and crisp and fresh. So let's get everything chopped up. You have to fan and when things are really tough and they're really rough and nothing's working but there's something inside of you that says I just have to follow that so once everything's chopped up and ready to go I have some sandwich or snack size bags I'm gonna do one bag of tomatoes and one bag of lettuce and cilantro I don't want to mix the tomato with the lettuce because it makes it soggy so I'm gonna go ahead and bag these up and then these will be ready to go for when we assemble the bowl inside of you that says I just have to follow that because you don't know who you're gonna be, who you're gonna be, who you're gonna be. <laughs> So once your quinoa comes to a boil, we're just gonna go ahead and really reduce the heat. I also like to kind of just give it a quick stir and then we are going to get all steamy, there we go. We're simply going to add a lid on and we're just gonna let this cook until the quinoa is cooked completely through. I did go ahead and 
rinse my black beans and pinto beans. So once the quinoa is done, we'll add those and the taco seasoning directly to the quinoa. So, we're so my quinoa is done. So to my quinoa, I'm gonna go ahead and add my drained and rinsed black beans and pinto beans. And I'm also going to add my packet of taco seasoning and I'll add a little bit of water. We'll mix this all together and then we're ready to put these bowls all together now you guys this is so easy i mean this was literally a very easy easy meal prep lunch and it should be really good full of real clean food and it should be very filling between the quinoa and the beans so i'll get this all mixed together and we'll assemble these bowls So our mixture for our bowls is done. Doesn't that look delicious? So to put our bowls together, it's very simple. We're going to add one four. So this entire batch of quinoa taco seasoning and beans makes four rest, four bowls. So we want about a half of a cup of quinoa. I think that's a little much. There we go. About a half of a cup of quinoa in each bowl. And then all I'm going to do is place my bag of cut up tomatoes and my bag of lettuce and cilantro just kind of in the bowl and then when i go to warm it up for lunch i'll go ahead and pull out the two cold items warm up the quinoa bean mixture and then we'll add our homemade guacamole and you could really add tortilla chips sour cream whatever you want you would just have to count the points for that so let's put together the rest of our lunch bowls i just have to follow that because you don't know who you're gonna meet who you're gonna meet who you're gonna meet <laughs> So for the guacamole portion, I am going to go ahead and put one bowl together for you to show you guys what it looks like. It's what I'll have for lunch today. So the guacamole is extremely easy. I picked up these teeny tiny avocados at Trader Joe's. So I'm going to actually have one avocado per day. I'll go ahead and weigh this out once I remove the pit and everything from the avocado but that's my plan is to just go ahead and eat one of these teeny tiny avocados each day and that's what i'm going to do is just kind of make my guacamole on a daily basis so if you have to take this to work what i would recommend is go ahead and juice your whole lime like we're going to do and bring the whole avocado to work and you can easily put this together right before you eat lunch so go ahead and Bring your whole avocado, bring your juice of your lime. So let's actually go ahead and juice our lime here. And you can even leave the juice of your lime in the refrigerator so that it's available for you each day. Or you can put it in a little to-go container, you know, something you'd put dressing in. And then you have your lime ready to go when you go to make your guacamole. So I'm going to go ahead and juice my whole entire lime and it'll be ready to go for the week. So I have my avocado here. So this is what how much that teeny tiny avocado makes. So I would just recommend that you just weigh out your avocado before you add your lime juice and anything else to it. And then you'll know how many points to count for your avocado. And then to that, I'm just going to add just a little bit of my lime juice. So that's what's really going to make it taste good and get that kind of more guacamole consistency. So this is a very easy guacamole and the only thing you have to count points for is the avocado. We're gonna add a little bit of garlic salt and that's what's really going to elevate that flavor and make it much more like a guacamole. So mix that all together, smash up your avocado to the consistency of guacamole that you like, whether it be chunky or smooth. I do like my guacamole a little bit chunky so I am going to leave a few chunks into my guacamole and now let's put together a bowl so to put together our bowls I went ahead and added the quinoa bean mixture to the bottom of my bowl to that I'm going to go ahead and add the lettuce and cilantro packet and what I'm going to do is just kind of put that lettuce and cilantro on about half of my bowl maybe three quarters of my bowl because we still want to be able to see the quinoa and bean mixture especially for like aesthetic reasons and then when we go to eat it we'll go ahead and just mix it all together so i've got my cilantro and my lettuce and then i also have my cut up tomatoes so i'm going to put those on my bowl as well just kind of off to the side here i'm going to add my guacamole because that is going to be part of my bowl is the actual guacamole and then i think the last thing that i'm going to add 
is a couple of crushed up tortilla chips. Now you also could do sour cream. You could add olives, kind of whatever you want to. And you just have to count the points for whatever toppings you decide to put on your quinoa bowl. So to top my bowl, I'm going to use one point of the Siete grain-free tortilla chips in lime. So basically it's going to be about two and a half chips. And I'm just gonna kind of crinkle that up on top of my bowl here. And that's going to give me that nice crunch. Now you could really add whatever else you wanted, of course, to your bowl. You just need to make sure that you count those points. So there we go. We add a little bit of tortilla chips to the top and our quinoa taco bowl is done. So let me flip you around and show you our completed lunch. So here is our completed quinoa taco bowl. Doesn't this look absolutely delicious? So let me go over the points here for you. If you are on the blue plan, this is only three smart points. The only thing you have to count points for is the quinoa. Now for toppings, I do need to add those points in. So I have one point worth of the Siete chips. I have two points worth of avocado. My lettuce, salsa, tomatoes are all zero smart points. So this is going to be a six smart point lunch. Look how delicious this looks. Now, if you are on the green plan without any toppings, this is seven points. And on the purple plan, it is actually zero smart points before you add any toppings. So I'm so excited for these. This is going to be a fantastic, delicious lunch. I can't wait. I'll probably pair this with a fruit and it's going to be wholesome, filling and delicious clean eating. For sweet treat this week, I'm going to be making clean eatum, eating freedom brownies. Ooh, that's a mouthful. Very simple, literally six ingredients. And I've heard that these brownies are phenomenal and they're really, really low smart point for a brownie. So let me show you what's in our brownies calls for cocoa powder. I don't have cocoa powder on hand. I just always sub cacao powder. So I'm going to be using that for the chocolate base. You'll need some coconut flour, coconut oil, maple syrup, vanilla extract, and some eggs. Super simple. So let's make some brownies. So I have my bowl here. To my bowl, I'm going to add one third cup of coconut flour. I just went ahead and measured them out in bowls since I don't have enough one third cups. I'm also going to add five cracked eggs and you guys know me and my shells. I always crack those separately. And then the recipe calls for one half of a cup of maple syrup. You can see I don't quite have a half of a cup. I'm out completely. I thought I had way more and I was just at Trader Joe's like two days ago. So I'm going to have to add that to my list and pick up some more maple syrup. I actually looked at Costco and they didn't have any. So one of those things that are in big demand, I guess. And then I have another third cup here of my cacao powder. You can use unsweetened coconut powder. I just like cacao. It's a superfood, and it gives it a little bit more rich chocolate taste. And then I went ahead and warmed up one third cup of coconut oil as well. And last but not least, I'm going to add just a little bit of vanilla extract. And then we are just going to mix this all together. And that's it. That is all we have to do for these brownies. And let me just tell you how delicious this smells. I'm hoping that they're sweet enough with a little lower amount of syrup. Um, I, I'm sure that they will be, but that is, that's a bummer. I really didn't know I was that low on syrup. So let me get this mixed together and then we're ready to throw this into a baking pan. All right, so I have my baking dish. This is a small one. It's about a six by nine. You could do a seven by 11. Depending on the size of the dish you choose, the thickness of your brownies will vary. But here is my brownie mix. It looks really good. So I'm literally just going to pour it on in. It smells incredible. It smells like when you go into a bakery, that just really sweet, like cookie cake brownie smell. That's what this batter smells like. So I am really excited, not to mention that these brownies are super clean everything. So we're gonna go ahead and add our brownie mix. And that's it. This is gonna go into a 350 degree oven for about 30 minutes or until our brownies are cooked through. Oh my goodness, you guys. My brownies are out of the oven. 
These look incredible. They need to cool completely. The recipe says let them cool completely or they will fall apart. So I'm going to let those get cooling. And I'm actually going to boil some eggs in my Instant Pot. So I wanted to show you guys, I've shown this before, but a lot of you are new to my channel. I want to show you the 555 method for making literally the easiest, best hard-boiled eggs. So while these delicious brownies cool, let's make some eggs. So for the easiest to peel best tasting hard boiled eggs. Go ahead and add your insert to your Instant Pot. You can also use the one that's made for eggs. I just use the little rack, it works just fine. To that, we're gonna go ahead and add one cup of water and that's going to serve as the liquid. Over here I have my eggs. I want to boil, I don't know, a dozen. So what I do is I just lay them on the rack and I'm telling you, it works just as well as the egg insert. So if you don't have that egg insert, you didn't spend the money on that, and all you have is this rack that came in your Instant Pot, you guys, it works just fine to boil eggs. Save yourself some money. But if you are looking for that insert and some of the other fun accessories for the Instant Pot, I will link an accessory pack down below for you guys that I found on Amazon, the one that I have, and I really do love it. It's comprehensive, it has all the different little accessories and tools for the Instant Pot. So I'll link that down below for you guys. All right, so all you're gonna do then is pop in your eggs. I might actually do all that are left here. So I love hard boiled eggs, love them on salad. I love them for breakfast when I don't feel like actually making an egg. So that's the last of those eggs. So very, very simple. You're going to pop your lid on and then down here on your display panel, you're simply going to select, mm, it's dirty, there we go. You're simply going to select the egg button and it's going to set it for five minutes. Once that five minutes is up, you're going to naturally release for five and then we'll take our eggs out. So I'll show you that once the timer goes off. So the timer went off and now it is naturally releasing so you can see that it is released for two minutes. So when that reads five minutes, we'll go ahead and turn this dial here to venting and then we'll be ready to put our eggs into an ice bath. When you hit five minutes, we're gonna go and release what little bit of pressure is left remove the lid i have an ice bath here and what i'll do is usually just take my tongs pull the eggs out and put them into the ice bath and here are our eggs so i just go in with my tongs because they are like super duper hot and i just go ahead and pop them here into this ice bath and then you want to do five minutes in the ice bath as well so basically that's where you get the 555 method now you can go longer in the ice bath if you want it's not going to hurt anything but once it's sat in the ice here for five minutes i'm not joking when i tell you that these are the easiest to peel perfectly hard-boiled eggs ever so i'll be back to show you just how quick and easy they peel and then kind of how i store my eggs i do pre-peel them all because my husband if he has to peel them himself he doesn't eat them so i'll be back to show you the next step so here's my system i have one to crack the egg put the shells here put the cracked egg here to allow it to dry so i take an egg out of my water give it a quick crack and literally you guys look at this the shell it just falls off of this, these eggs. It's just absolutely amazing. Look at that. Just comes right off and you can even take it off in big pieces. Once I get the shell removed, I will often dip it in the water and then go ahead and just set it aside. I kind of demolished that one, but you get the idea. So let's go ahead and get all these eggs peeled. Yeah, there, this one's coming out better. See how you can just pull the entire shell off? I must have been a little rough on that one. It's just crazy. And I always like to give it a rinse though, just to set it aside. And that way they're nice and dry when they go into my Ziploc bag. So let me get these all peeled and then I'll be back to show you kind of how I store my eggs and what makes them last for the entire week. So my eggs are all peeled and they're all ready to go. So how I like to store them is I take a gallon size Ziploc bag. In the bottom of the bag, I put a paper towel and then I'm going to go ahead and add all my eggs in. Now they are fairly dried off. I mean, they're a little bit damp still, but I'll go ahead and add all my eggs into that. I kind of try to place them on the paper towel. I feel like that works really well. Go ahead and pop all your hard boiled eggs in. And again, I pre peel mine because my husband does not eat them if he has to peel them himself. I know, I know. And then I put a paper towel on top. 
when I go to seal the bag, I try to push as much air out of the bag as I can. And then this is kind of how my paper, my eggs look. So they're wedged between the two paper towels. It helps soak up all the moisture. And then I just store these in my fridge. So when I want a hard boiled egg, I just pull one out of the bag. And literally you have perfect hard boiled eggs in 15 minutes. So I went ahead and cut my brownies into 15 servings. The recipe makes 15 servings. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and pull one out, show you the serving size, and give you the smart points. So here's where I remove the serving. So that's how thick the brownies are. That is the size of the brownie. So that's a pretty good size. And we're talking real whole clean ingredients like maple syrup, cacao powder, coconut oil, all the things so that is a really good size brownie and it is four smart points per serving no matter what plan you're on so you my friends can have a brownie for four smart points so here are my snacks for this week you guys i have a new favorite thing ever i can't wait to share it with you guys so let's start with that these are in Incredible. I got these off of the Thrive website, so make sure you guys are checking that out. These are the Lillabee Grain-Free Brownie Thins in the Chocolate Mint. These are paleo. Oh my gosh, you guys, these are so good. They taste like the crispy edges of a brownie with a fabulous mint taste. You can have an entire serving one ounce, which is literally a ton. There's only four servings in this entire bag for five smart points. Or you can have half of a serving, half of an ounce for only two smart points. All fantastic ingredients. I'm not kidding when I tell you guys how amazing these are. These will be a complete repurchase for me. I believe they have other flavors. So next time I order from Thrive, I am ordering more because they're so incredibly delicious. Highly recommend. Also, I have some of my Mary's Gone Crackers. I just got this flavor off Thrive, the lemon dill. These are really good. If you're looking for a really hearty cracker with fabulous ingredients, I love the Mary's. So here's your nutritional information. It's, I believe, five points per serving. But you guys, these crackers are so good and filling because they're full of nuts and seeds. So I usually have half of a serving for two points and I like to dip those in cottage cheese. I know that sounds weird, but it is such a great combo. So I dip these crackers in cottage cheese and I have like a four or five point snack full of protein, full of good healthy ingredients, but I also am getting the crunch from the crackers obsessed. And I got these off of Thrive as well. And then this, you can really just use any cottage cheese. I got this at my local health food store. So I have those as kind of my snacks maybe afternoon and then this i like to have maybe after lunch for something sweet and then in the morning i generally will have a built bar i have a coconut almond here and a black chocolate cherry right now built bar has a huge promotion where they're giving you 15 percent off of your order which is awesome plus free shipping so i'm going to put a link down in the description box for you guys to take advantage of the 15 percent off you literally can't beat it they have some limited edition flavors out right now they just have a lot going on they're actually giving you a bounce back where you get a discount down the road so highly recommend reordering and stocking up on your built bars now if you're new to built bar they have ten dollars off your order which is a stellar deal and that actually goes through a separate link so i'll put that down below for you guys as well for those of you that are new to built bar highly recommend these bars are really good this one is like an almond joy i love it and this one it tastes like those chocolate covered cherries you get at christmas in the red and black box love built bars they are only three smart points per bar with the exception of the nut face bars for example, peanut butter, peanut butter brownie, and toffee almond. Those are going to be four smart points per bar, but you can't beat it. They're packed full of protein, fiber, and fat, so they keep you nice and full, and they literally taste like a candy bar. So definitely check out Built Bar. Take advantage of their great promotions they have going on right now. So these are my snacks for the upcoming week. Thank you for joining me on another weekly WW Meal Prep. I hope you're as excited about these three recipes as I am. I can't wait to eat all of this goodness throughout this next week. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Make sure you're subscribed and your bell notification is turned on. That way you're not missing a single video. All of the recipes are on my website, which just launched yesterday, 
Sunday. So down in the description box where the recipes were typed out, you will find the link to come on over and visit my website where you will find photos and all of the details for all of the recipes that I share. It makes it so much easier just to have everything in one centralized location. Also on my website, you're going to find my discount code list. So make sure that you check that out. Enter your email so you can subscribe to my website. I'm gonna be doing giveaways, newsletters, all sorts of fun things, so make sure you do that. And lastly, over on my website, make sure that you're following me on all my social media. Those links are at the very top of the website, Facebook, Instagram, and my Amazon store. If you have any questions on my website, please make sure that you leave those down below and I will do my best to answer those for you. Also, thumbs up this video if you love meal preps and comment down below. I wanna hear which of these recipes are you most excited to try out. Thank you guys so much for spending some time with me today. Happy Monday, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.